Good afternoon. My name is Michael Grimshaw. I am with Act On Software out of Portland, Oregon. And I'm here talking about the business of velocity. See, in Q4 of last year, my COO, Bill Piersnick, was preparing to update our board of directors on our decision to move forward with Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Bill approached me and asked me to put together a list of things as to why we chose to move forward with Pivotal. Now, let me ask a quick question. Has anyone here ever worked with engineers before? <laughs> One or two of you, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you this. What happens if you ask an engineer to put together a list of cool things they like about a technology they are totally geeking out about? Yeah. Engineers don't just get caught in the weeds. We dig down to the roots and try to determine the pH balance of the soil to a confidence, confidence interval stretching out 12 decimal places. That is what engineers do. Now, Bill knew this. Bill's a smart guy. He's worked with a few engineers over the years. So as Bill turns to walk away, he pauses and he, he looks back at me and he says, Grimshaw, I only need three or four bullet points, okay? Great. I already had this list running through my head and now he wants me to try to break this down to three or four bullet points? Okay, Bill. So I go back to my desk, sit down, and I start thinking through it. And I trying to figure out, okay, what do all these things have in common? What is the core business value that ties all this together? And it was at that point it occurred to me, the business value that all these features provide comes down to one thing, velocity. Velocity is the speed of something in a given direction. Now, any one of the things on that list is pretty cool on its own, but when working together as a system, Pivotal Cloud Foundry provides act on software speed in the direction of returning business value to our customers. Fast innovation in returning business value to our customers is kind of a mantra at act on. And I hope it is for your company as well. For those of you who might not be too, uh, too familiar with my company, Act On Software provides market, a marketing automation platform specifically focused in adaptive marketing and lead management. Being a visionary company, an innovator, a market leader, etc., is something we take really seriously to act on. We work hard to be at the top right of that top right quadrant. We are so serious about it that we've doubled down in our R&D investment over the course of this last year. Pivotal Cloud Foundry is a core component tying all that R&D investment together. And one more thing I want to point out is that we are focused on being profitable because this is also where velocity comes in. Sure, you can get momentum if you throw a ton of resources at something, but that doesn't necessarily translate to velocity. In fact, it can even work against it. Our CEO, Kate Johnson, is an amazing, amazing woman to work for. Her background is finance, specifically in the tech sector. She has a laser-like focus on ROI. Yeah, she will absolutely green light investing in the business, but it better be lean, and it better be able to de demonstrate a serious return on that investment. Kate is focused. And focus is something that often gets missed when discussing velocity. Velocity doesn't mean busy, not at all. Velocity doesn't even necessarily mean speed. Velocity is speed in a given direction. Velocity requires focus. And focus on returning value to your customers is something that can easily get lost the bigger your infrastructure footprint becomes. The more resources you devote towards supporting your systems, the less resources you have to provide new features and new services to your customers. This is why Pivotal Cloud Foundry is a core component of Acton's technological roadmap. You see, we have business requirements that dictate a wide, a wide infrastructure footprint. We have customers and services that require running in a physical data center, running on VMware. We have customers in AWS, in Oregon and the EU. We are also moving into Azure due to market demand. And we can see a possible need to be running on GCP in the future. If your business case requires more than a handful of servers, 
You want something managing all that complexity so you can devote your resources towards the features and services that actually make your company money. This is the power of Pivotal Cloud Foundry. In the traditional IT model, you managed and supported the entire stack, and you paid the price and the resources required to configure, orchestrate, manage, and support that stack. Then along came, infra along came infrastructure as a service. Great, a significant amount of that management and support was covered, though not so much the configuration and orchestration parts, which themselves also required their own management and support. And while not reflected in this image, another stage that came along was containers. The level of complexity that containers brought basically doubled or removed so much of the advantage that IAAS provided. Configuration, especially in orchestration, configuration, artifact management, all that was added back into the stack that, IA, that a lot of the stuff that IAS had removed. I remember when Docker came out. Everyone was talking about write once, run, run anywhere. Great idea, that sounds awesome, I want that. And that was great for developers. But one of the things that didn't get nearly as much press was the management of the run anywhere piece. The complexity in running anywhere adds to DevOps. The complexity that running anywhere adds to DevOps and ops is not insignificant. Cloud Foundry abstracts away your infrastructure so that you can have the same rhythms of configuration, orchestration, and management and support regardless of your infrastructure. Again, the more resources you devote towards managing and supporting your systems, the less resources you have to provide new features and services to your customers. You want to abstract all that away so you can keep your focus, so you can gain velocity. Now, I've got to give major kudos to the, to the person who opened my eyes to all of this. He's the best CTO I've ever worked for, and he's a guy by the name of Phil Sims. And no, I am not saying that just because he is in this room. Since Phil became my CTO, I've had a crash course on Pivotal Cloud Foundry and the velocity it brings. You see, I was the guy that wanted to code all this stuff together. When Phil came in and started talking about hyper-converged architecture and a multi-cloud strategy, I was like, yes, I love it. Give me some Python, give me some Ansible, give, give, me, give me Docker, and let's piece it all together, and, 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 oh, and let's throw in a whole bunch of other so software to support that, to try to support that, to try to accomplish that. <coughs> in fact, I had spent four months grinding away, trying to update an open source platform that let's just say it wasn't exactly backed by the Cloud Foundry Foundation or any other foundation for that matter. I was at the point of, of hacking, the, hacking the, the build installer together just to try to make it work for our specific use case. Let me make that clear, four months. During that time, my CTO, Phil, kept talking to me about Pivotal Cloud Foundry. I hate to admit this, especially since he's still sitting here, but um, <clears throat> I just kind of thought that Phil had drank in quite a bit of the pivotal Kool-Aid. But I had an epiphany towards the end of those four months. I realized that our customers don't pay us to support the infrastructure that we want to build. Our customers pay us to support the services they want to use. So after hitting a wall at four months, I went to Phil and I said, okay, I do not want to be a blocker to our developers. And while I am not willing to drink the Kool-Aid, I'll give Pivotal Cloud Foundry a try. I'll do a proof of concept. Here's how that POC went. First day, I dug into the documentation and got, a bunch of, and got the search together. Second day, I had a full Pivotal Cloud Foundry, um, pull, full Pivotal Cloud Foundry up and running. Third day, we had services deployed. That was all with a single, a single platform engineer. At that point, I went back to Phil and I said, okay, I'll drink the Kool-Aid. In fact, give me a pitcher. Uh, yeah, I'm on. And that was just the POC. To get a staging environment up took one month, again, with a single platform engineer. To get a full production environment, we brought in Pivotal for a dojo and doubled the size of our platform engineers. Yeah, we now had two. And you know what? In one quarter, we had a control plane running concourse. We had 
concourse building and repaving a production deployment of PCF in both AWS Oregon and Germany. We had the entire building code and it was interacting with our existing infrastructure. And four, we had a full suite of production services running on it in both regions. Ladies and gentlemen, that is velocity. For us, Pivotal Cloud Foundry means velocity. And velocity is the key. The faster you can provide value to your current and future customers, the happier that makes your customers, the happier that makes your board, and the happier that makes your team. For Acton Software, our current and future customers value security. They value stability and they value scalability, including the ability to scale up new features and services. So let's take a look into how Pivotal Cloud Foundry provides velocity to those values. Office of Personnel Management, Equifax, Yahoo, Marriott, Adobe. Does that ring any bells? Well, tell me what, let me add a few more. How about this? Stuxnet, Flame, Eternal Blue, Wanna Cry. Not Petya? Okay, I think you guys know exactly where I'm going. I think you folks know exactly where I'm going with this. The business cost of Not Petya alone was valued at over $10 billion. And that's just the cost of being compromised. That doesn't cover the cost of your customers losing trust and faith in you. There's also the cost of being compliant. GDPR, ISO 27000, PCI, HIPAA, NIST 853R4, I'm not gonna say that five times fast. Hopefully I don't need to make the, make the case for the importance of security. I don't think I need to make that case because I think your customers already are. Security matters. Part of Acton's R&D investment has been a big push into security enablement. We brought in a new director of security. And let me tell you, I do not mess with our director of security. To give you an idea, our director of security is former Army, is fluent in multiple languages, has a Juris Doctorate, oh, and, and is a power lifter. Does that sound like someone you want to mess with? I don't think so. Here, let me introduce you to our director of security. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Hadass. And that is another mantra at Act On. Hadass gets what Hadass wants. The easier I make it, the easier I make it for Hadass to get what she wants, the easier my life becomes. And let me tell you, Pivotal Cloud Foundry makes my life easier. First way it makes my life easier is what it includes straight out of the box. Single sign-on. Want a turnkey solution to securing access to applications and APIs? Guess what? There's a tile for that. Federated SSO like SAML? Check. Active Directory integration, LDAP integration, Okta integration? Check, check, check. OpenID Connect? No problem. And, and there's a whole host of other options. What about secure credential management? There's a tile for that. This is CredHub. CredHub centralizes and secures credential cr uh, generation, storage, lifecycle management, and access. There's a CredHub service broker to handle secret management for your applications. And in case you use HashiCorp Vault, there is also an integration between CredHub and HashiCorp Vault. Compliance scanner. You can scan Linux VMs to make sure they're compliant and configured correctly. And in addition to all those tiles, there's file integrity monitoring, IP security, CLAM AV, and those are just some of the highlights. But to give you an idea of the security velocity that, that came out of the box that we experienced at Acton, the SSO tile took a day to install, configure, and integrate with Okta. One day. Now, we also know that security is more than just cool tools. What about compliance? To start with, those cool tools are there to provide velocity towards compliance. Having a platform that makes it easy to integrate security features, that was a big plus for us. But it goes beyond the tools. No small part of cl compliance is policies, procedures, and documentation. This is also where Pivotal Cloud Founder makes your life easier. For example, with GDPR becoming an industry standard, you're going to want to know all the potential places where PII could be stored in your, in, in your platform. Here's the documentation for that. 
It even provides recommendations on configuration changes required to work in a G GDPR compliant environment. What about HIPAA? This actually is that long NIST 853, R4, et cetera, control, but the HIPAA PHI regulations can be cross-referenced to this control set. And you see that list on the side, the left hand, it goes through everything in Pivotal Cloud Foundry and tells you where the compliance features that are covered by, uh, covered by the, uh, the, um, the platform and what you have to do on your own. This document here can provide wonderful guidance to how, deployer, to how deployers may achieve compliance when using a shared responsibility model. In addition to that, Pivotal also has quite a few white papers that cover various compliance use cases. The support is there if you need it, and if also if you need it, there's professional services. Now, unfortunately, there's not a tile that will magically make your organization compliant, but there are a ton of tools, recommendations, and documentation that can provide velocity in that direction. Now, what if you want to make your, take your platform to a whole new level as far as hardening, even beyond current standards? What if you want to greatly reduce your exposure to advanced persistent threats and want to avoid like what happened to the Office of Personnel Management and others and want to try to keep adversaries from gaining a long-term foothold in your, in, in your systems? Let me introduce you to Repave, Repair, and Rotate. Now, I've got to admit, this is something I've been totally geeking out about. By leveraging Concourse, Bosch, and Pivotal Cloud Foundry's native high, high availability architecture, you can refresh your infrastructure on a regular cadence, weekly or even daily if you'd like. Basically, the long and short of it is every week, you apply the latest security patches, rebuild your entire platform, and rotate the credentials, all with zero downtime. The best thing about this is if you've taken an infrastructure as a code approach to your Pivotal Cloud Foundry deployment, you have everything you need to implement it right there. Now, sure, a bad guy might have found a zero-day exploit or leveraged a, a social engineering vulnerability, but they really, with the repair, re, with the repave, repair, and rotate model, they really have a very short time period to try to break out of the native sandboxing and exploit that in a way that causes a compromise. It's the difference between a hacking attempt and being compromised. So. That's the idea of the speed of security we've begun to experience to act on. Now let's look at another area that our customers value. When we brought in Pivotal for a platform dojo, one of the first questions they asked was what our SLA was for that layer of our infrastructure. When we said five nines, we were a little concerned what their response was. And you know what their response was? Okay. The more I've dug into the architecture of Pivotal Cloud Foundry, the more I've understood why so many organizations, both big and small, use it and bank on its stability. For those of you relatively new to Pivotal Cloud Foundry, here's the here, here is the foundation of the platform stability, Bosch. Now, has anyone in this room ever been on call? Actually, my guess is everyone in this room has probably been on call. Sure, your name might not be in the pager duty notification, but if you're in the C-suite or anything with management, you share that same dread of that phone call coming in the middle of the night. Now, your nightmares might not be based on a server on fire, but your night nightmares might rather be about burning through cash flow and burn customers. While Bosch does unify release engineering, deployment, and lifecycle management of both the VMs and the software they run on, the biggest reason I love Bosch is because of its self-healing ability. In a nutshell, Bosch has, the, Bosch has the logic built into it that if a VM or the application running on that VM is operating in less than a perfect manner, Bosch tries to remediate, Bosch tries to remediate the issue. And if it can't fix the issue, it says, all right, I'm gonna spin up a new instance. I, I'm going to spin up a new instance that I know works, and I'm sending the traffic there, and then I'm just going to tear down that old instance. Oh, and the other nice thing about Bosch is it's based, it is built, so much high availability is built into it that you don't have to worry about taking a big hit on your SLAs. Now, when I was testing uh, Bosch's PagerDuty integration, I also happened to be on call during that time. We didn't have any filters or rules set up at that point, so I was, I was getting... 
I was getting a lot of pages, shall we say. I was getting paged on everything that wasn't operating perfectly. I got to the point where I actually looked forward to those pages because I'd first get a notice that saying, hey, this isn't working as we expect it to. This isn't working as Bosch as expects it to. And then immediately right after, I get a notification saying, this is how Bosch has fixed it. This is how Bosch handled it. So all I've got to do is resolved, resolved, resolved. Stability in Pivotal Cloud Foundry is built from the bottom up. And while Bosch is built for Pivotal Cloud Foundry, it's not, it's not only for running Pivotal Cloud Foundry. For software you can't or don't want to run in containers, you can run it on Bosch. Again, even beyond the self-healing capabilities of Bosch, you have your configuration management, HA, release engineering, and deployment automation, hardened operating systems, I could go on. The list is, the list is long. But one of the things, in fact, one of the things that we are currently doing at ActOn is reviewing our legacy infrastructure to determine what can be run on containers and the things that can't be run on containers, we are, we are preparing to do our own Bosch releases for. And the best thing about it is, a lot of that stuff, we won't have to write our own Bosch release because the level of community support out there, the Bosch releases that are already out, we can reuse a ton of that. I'd recommend, if you're looking at Pivotal Cloud Foundry and you're curious about Bosch, definitely spend some time on Bosch.io. It's an incredibly helpful website. And if you don't even want to go there, go to GitHub and start looking for some Bosch releases. There's a ton of stuff out there for it. And that's the great thing about this platform. It truly is a platform. It can provide stability even for the things that you don't run CF push on. Okay, here's my final point about stability. Yes, the platform just works. Now, if you're new to the Cloud Foundry scene or, or maybe only at this stage considering Cloud Foundry, you might be wondering just how much Kool-Aid I've had to drink. I understand that. I understand that so much because I've been there myself. Not long after Phil, my CTO, came to act on, he brought a consultant, Dimitri, that he'd worked with in the past. Besides working with Phil, Dimitri had also spent a few years at Pivotal. On day three of our, our uh, PCF uh, POC, Dimitri took me out for coffee and he says, if you're going to move forward with Pivotal, you need to know a few things. Um, he said, you need to have an idea what's coming. And one of the first things he told me was, be prepared, you're gonna be accused of drinking the Kool-Aid. He said, you are, going to be, you are going to be accused of reading only the marketing material, and, and, and that is why you made the decision. And while I've gotta say, Dimitri was darn near prophetic at that point, because yes, it happened. I mean, in that conversation, I looked back to Dimitri and I said, hey, Dimitri, that's not gonna happen, I'm a dork. You know, I read documentation, I dig through GitHub, I just built a PCF, a PCF installation myself. No one's gonna accuse me of that. He goes, it doesn't matter. That's what people are gonna say. And you know what? He was absolutely right. But here's the thing, I can't blame people for saying that. Because I was one of the same people. You think it's the Kool-Aid, but when you get in and actually use it, you realize this stuff just works. When, you, when I started working with it, and especially when I became responsible for it, is when I realized the level of stability it provided. Now, the truth is, if you want your platform to work for you, you have to work on it. And this leads me to one of the last few, the last few items I need to cover. Pivotal Cloud Foundry provides significant velocity, but velocity itself also has some significant requirements. I've mentioned how we got this platform through the proof of concept and into staging with only a single platform engineer working on it. Now, in case that sounded like I was advocating a lone wolf strategy, I want to tell you very clearly, absolutely not. Nothing could be farther than the truth. Um, first, I have been blessed through this whole process with some great, great developers, some incredible software engineers. Through this whole process, I worked with a guy by the name of Curtis. He's a software engineer and team lead at Acton. And in fact, Curtis was the first person who called up Pivotal and got Aaron Heyer, our account representative, in, in, in Acton itself. Um, and, and even beyond Curtis, there's other engineers, a guy by the name of Vasil, a guy by the name of Ben, that totally dug into the platform. They had some experience in Spring, but they self-taught, dug into the documentation, and taught themselves how to leverage themselves. They onboarded themselves into PCF, and currently today are working on building the training, building the training mechanism to onboard other developers. You need good developers to get good velocity. Second thing you need 
is an incredible platform team. There is no way I could have gotten PCF in production in multiple data centers without a solid platform team. Inger, who's the other platform engineer that worked on production and was there with a, uh, um, uh, were there through the dojo, she has a background in both DevOps and web development, and she is also one of the hardest working people I've ever had the pleasure to work with. In fact, during the dojo, some of the pivotal team said, "Man, Inger, she she does the work normally covered by four people." That's how hard she works. Another member of our platform team is a guy by the name of Gabe. He's a QA, and he's a QA architect. Um, and while we were building the platform, he was testing new QA, new testing processes. He was building new t uh, testing processes. He was doing significant work in, in our, new, our, our new environment of CICD. Um, and, and he was leveraging the Altros Jenkins tile. And the cool thing was he was working on developing on PCF while we were even building the thing. Um, the fourth member of our, our platform engineering team is our, uh, the director of enterprise architecture, a guy by the name of Michael Walker, who is also my product owner. Now, the reason I say not just the names, but what these people's backgrounds are, is to give you an idea of, of if you put together a good platform team, the type of velocity you can get out of it. I say that to recommend as a model. It is absolutely amazing what happens if you get platform engineers, with DevOps platform engineers, working with QA people, working with architects. The velocity that you can get out of all of those people coordinating together is off the chart. They worked as a team to get Pivotal into Act On. Oh, and the, of, is the coordination from that type of team is off the chart. Third third point here, and this is key, this is huge, is you need the support of leadership. Let me rephrase that. You need the support of leadership. No small part of the velocity we experienced at Acton was due to Phil, my CTO, Bill, my COO, and Kate, my CEO, clearing the runway so we could receive the velocity, we could get the velocity we did. They worked as a team to get Pivotal into Act On and to ensure that the project was successful. Leadership is key. And leadership is key for this next requirement of velocity, cultural change. To get velocity, you will experience cultural change. And in fact, cultural change will be a requirement. You will need a customer-centric mentality, empathy for your customers. That was covered in the keynote so well last night empathy for your customers. You will need to be grounded in lean, agile practices. You need a DevOps mindset. And you absolutely, absolutely must treat your platform as a product. Give your platform, give your platform team a product owner. Give your platform team the bandwidth to continually develop and work on the platform. Give them the ability to treat their developers as their customers. And be ready for them to give you some serious velocity. Finally, nail down a clear narrative for what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish. This is another thing I can't overstate. Narrative matters. Narrative helps. Turn your use cases into stories, not just agile stories, but organizational stories. What is your story? What is the story of your organization? And make sure it is a customer-focused one. That really, really makes a difference. And in making these stories, don't hesitate to leverage your demos. One of the things that I did when we did, um, when I was working on the staging deployment, was I str strung together a whole series of demos, videos, all sharing the same thing, pounding the same thing over and over and over again. And that shared narrative, that shared theme helped tremendously. The reason it helps tremendously is it helps set expectations and gets people sharing the same vision. Now, I don't know what exactly, I don't know exactly what your vision is. I don't know what the, your company's vision is. But I can give you a list of things that can speed it along the path. And that path is velocity. Thank you.